Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle channel. Um, not often I do this many videos in one weekend, but we're going to put in the, the DM01 motor on this bike. Uh, this one, the O2, is currently locked in a safe mode because of problems that I found during the test ride. So I've been asked to put on and try the DM01 in the meantime and get some feedback on that motor. It goes on in pretty much exactly the same way as the O2, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the install. Um, we'll just get it on and if I find anything amazing during it, I'll put some stuff on the video. So this is the larger DM01 on the bike. Um, it does use the same lock ring plate as the other one. There's no teeth on it. I've had mixed reports. Um, some people are saying that the teeth gives you less surface area for it to hold on to, and it doesn't need them. Um, so smooth works better. Um, the teeth work great on my BBS HD. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how tight I can get that on um, with this tool. I think I'll probably use my hammer to try and tap it on a bit tighter than I can get with my with my hands um, because, I mean, this is a bigger motor, it's stronger. Um, and the 500 watt one came with some weird contraption that you're supposed to use in here, but I couldn't get it to work. And this one hasn't got anything, so we'll see how it goes. So that's the DM01 on the bike now. Um, it hangs down a little bit lower than the DM02, but then it is a bit bigger. Uh, I am concerned um, about the way the wires are underneath there. I think they are they are quite exposed and I am going to be making something to protect those. And I think with a future revision, they should move the placement of those wires because it's just it's just asking for trouble underneath like that, um, or at least do something to, to protect them better. Um, my main gripe again with this has been the wiring with speed sensor being too long and the main harness cable too long. And then um, I can do a better job up here, but it's going to be okay for, for a test drive. Uh, but it's still, there's still too much cabling and on the throttle up here it kind of ejected out of the top um, and it'd be much better if it ejected it out of the bottom here so you could take it across underneath rather than having the wires come across the top um, which you get with the with the controller as well sorry with the with the switch unit as well uh, so i'm going to give this a test out and see how it goes and i'm really hoping that this test ride last longer than the one for the DMO one and that I don't encounter the firmware problem. Okay, so this is the ride footage with the DMO one uh, You'll notice that it's also very, very quiet, just like the O2. It's not any more noisy, I think, than the BBS HD, that's for sure, and pretty comparable with the Photon as well. It gets up to speed pretty quick. I like the torque sensor. It is, well, it, it definitely, I think, needs some proper configuration. It's a little bit snappy at the start, and there are one or two sort of little irregularities with it, um, but nothing like the problems that I had with the O2. Uh, it's sensitive enough. Um, it, it's very like it's very like a BBS HD stock. Uh, right now, on the settings I've got, it's the most that I can put on so it's set to 30 amps and on my reading it was kicking out about just over 1500 watts uh, the battery is only charged at 53 volts though so if it was a fully charged battery you'd get more like 1700 watts which is again pretty much in line with the BBS HD uh, the difference being of course is the torque sensor and like I say it, it is it is nice to use um, coming down here I, I'm mostly doing mostly doing pedaling on all of this. Um, I did use the throttle a little bit and it was fine. It was kind of like kind of like the throttle on a stock BBS HD. Um, possibly a little bit less lurchy uh, than the throttle uh, on a stock BBS HD. Um, but I had no problems getting up to speed uh, and it'll do you know 50 kilometers an hour quite comfortably on the flat. I don't have GPS up for this. I did record it with Strava and it gave me a top speed of 66 kph which was down this big hill if you're wondering about the weird sky it's because there's a really big uh, bushfire that's grown to about 1800 square hectares kilometers no not kilometers 1800 hectares um, that's just off to the the right of the screen 
Uh, it's about 13 kilometres outside of town at the moment, so kind of hoping that they that they get a handle on that. Otherwise, things things might get quite interesting. So yeah, the most I hit down this hill was 66 kph, which is again it, it's in line with with the BBS HD. Uh, the difference being that there was the torque sensor, which is which is nice to have. Um, there was not any real need to shift up and down between levels. Um, and if you want to get exercise in it, you can just drop down one or two. Um, it's certainly possible to do that. Um, so again, I'm, I'm pedaling up here. I think after this, I went throttle only for quite a bit. But really, I think the torque sensor is where it's at with this motor. And I think it's showing potential right now but it could be really, really good if they sort out the if they sort out the settings that it comes from factory. I don't think the optimal settings have yet been determined with this. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I was sent these motors in the first place was so I could ride around and play about with it um, and try and find out what might need to be changed. Um, so yeah, yeah, this is on throttle. Um, kind of going downhill so when you go uphill with the throttle it, it doesn't perform as well as pedaling like I think for climbing you're you're better off using using the pedal assist um, and the gears I mean there's, there's nothing wrong with the throttle um, I just think that the torque sensor is is better if you have it here um, I think I'm a bit spoiled with using the throttle with with the ASI stuff because when you use the throttle with the ASI stuff it, it really it really goes <clears throat> sorry but again um, it, it felt nice to ride uh, it definitely does need more refinement though and hopefully over the next few weeks uh, we'll be able to, to to do that and to adjust the settings because really when it goes out to a customer they want to just be able to put it on the bike and then not prat around with settings for hours uh, so it should be possible to set it so that the torque isn't quite so aggressive. Um, it had the same thing when you put your foot on the pedal and just rested it really lightly, it tended to trigger the torque sensor. Um, it is a different torque sensor again to the one in the DMO2, so it's going to require uh, a different set of settings to, to tune it than that one. Anyway, um, I'm going to let this, this play to the end. Uh, you can skip on with the timestamps if you want, and I'll give my final thoughts on this afterwards.
So that's me back from my testing. Overall, I think it's a good start. I think there are some easy fixes that could make it really great though. Little touches that would make all the difference. I think that the, the torque sensor needs to be dialed in much better. It functions, but there were some occasions where it abruptly dropped the power while pedaling before coming back on. And it does come on like very rapidly at the start. And that's great to have for the hills. It's just a little bit too much for when you just stop and start pedaling. I think that the operation could be quite a bit smoother than it is. It's still light years better than using the cadence-based pass and jumping between power levels all the time. I'm going to be spending some time learning the settings in conjunction with 2.7 and try and get a, a smoother operation. Right now, the only documentation available is in Chinese. There are some of the potential dealers with these motors as well right now. So hopefully I'm going to work with them a bit and try and get some optimum settings that should probably be put on from the factory. In terms of heat performance, after this ride, the motor felt warm on the outside. There was no reading for the motor temperature, but the controller temperature was showing 41 degrees C. And I want to see why there was no motor temperature reading before I sort of really try and push it to the point of throttling. I was able to hold my hand on the casing of the motor though, and from what I remember, that's kind of similar to a stock BBS HD. The, uh, the other things that I think need looking at are the install with the tool. I actually used a hammer to tighten it further than I could do just with my hands, and it hasn't worked its way loose just yet. When I looked at the motor after the after the ride though, I could see that it had squashed the, the TPU space that I'd made. And I think that there has been a little bit of movement, but it's actually kind of tightened it on more. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. And if it comes loose, then I'm just gonna to have to find a way to get more torque on it. Um, I don't actually have a recommended torque setting for this motor right now. The wiring um, I think could be greatly improved in terms of the length because it's much too long, especially uh, the speed sensor at the back. And I think it's great for people with things like recumbent, but ideally this was this could be something that you order, right? So that the default size is for a, just a normal bike like this. And if you have a recumbent, you could order, order longer stuff. With the display, Changing settings, it, it is getting a little bit annoying having to jump through two password protected menus in order to do something. I'll be giving my feedback and suggestions to make this uh, a more seamless experience. I'd like to see as well with the settings, uh, an option to reset the motor back to the factory settings if possible. I mean, overall, it's, uh, it's an encouraging start. Uh, I like that the motor is very quiet in operation. And I think that it definitely has potential. Hopefully the things that I'm identifying with it can be taken into consideration because I get the impression that overall the motor and the mechanics are solid. It's the small details that would really push it over the edge. So anyway, that's, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and a huge thanks to the channel members. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.